Hey guys, I just wanted to take a minute and come in and make a really quick video for you. This is for anybody who lives in the Las Vegas area. Um, <clears throat> had a really, really weird uh, encounter with some Kirby salesmen yesterday. Let me tell you something. Um, uh, it, it left me feeling so uncomfortable and insecure in my own home. I ended up, you know, telling them, you guys got to go. But anyways, so basically I'm just making this video to warn you guys um, what to look for. These Okay, so basically this woman will come to your door. <clears throat> I swear, this whole situation has got me so weirded out. This woman will come to your door and she's going to tell you uh, she needs to do a demonstration. She needs to come in and clean something. She's either going to vacuum your floors, clean your floors, uh, hardwood floors, or your your window tracks, or anything. All kind of, Your glass on your windows, something. She needs to clean something, and she gets paid just for coming in and doing it. You don't have to buy anything. I noticed that it was a Kirby deal for, uh, I don't know if you know what Kirby vacuums are, but it was a Kirby deal because I was looking at her, her, her sheet of paper that she was trying to sell things on. So anyways, um, so basically what she does is she begs and pleads with you until you say, all right, whatever, just come in and do it so I can get rid of you. She's looking for people like me who are tired and let their guard down and say, whatever, just do it. And then she says, okay, I'll be right back. Um, I'll be back in 15 minutes. And then she takes off. And then, so I'm sitting at my kitchen table, the doorbell rings and I tell Zach, I'm like, hey, Zach, that's that lady. Go ahead and let her in. So Zach goes over, opens the door. And before I know it, I got two guys standing in my living room. And I'm like, who, who are you? So now there's two guys in my living room and they got Kirby box. They got a Kirby box with them. And I looked at them and I said, please tell me you're not here to try and sell me a Kirby machine. I've already bought a Kirby machine. It died a horrible death and it's gone. And um, the maintenance is too high. The price is too high. I'm not buying another one. Oh, okay, well, we just need to give the demonstration. We get money for giving the demonstration. So we're just gonna give the demonstration and, and then, um, and then we'll go. Okay. Well, anybody who's ever dealt with a home salesman knows that's not the deal. So anyway, the, there's one guy who's with him who's doing all the talking, basically. He's the tall, the tall, I'll just call him the tall guy. So anyways, he's doing all the talking, making me feel comfortable and confident. And he's talking to, you know, the dogs and everything. And oh, he wants to give the dogs treats and whatever. Oh, can I give him a treat? Oh, yeah. You know, he's very personable. So the other guy is really quiet and he's taking the vacuum out of the box. He has longer kind of stringy hair and he's got a black eye. He's got like his nose is like scratched and he's got like a moonbeam. He's got a black eye. So um, I look at him and I go, so what happened? Did the Kirby hit you in the eye? And he didn't say anything, but the tall guy jumps in and says, oh, he's got really sensitive skin. And my daughter scratched his face and it left his, his eye black and blue. And I'm just looking at him like, really? So now, but, but to deter from that, he's now showing me pictures of his daughter in his phone. Oh, this is my daughter. Cute kid, whatever. So he's, he's trying to connect. He's trying to, you know, be personable or whatever. So then he asks me, so is your husband home? And I'm like, no, he'll be home soon. And I thought that was a weird question to ask. And then he says, um, is he going to freak out if you got a bunch of guys in the house? And I'm just like, um, well, I guess it depends on the guys. I, I'm sure he would freak out if, uh, you know, certain guys were in my house. Um, I said, no, he's going to freak out because you're here with a vacuum cleaner that we've already owned and there's no way in hell he's going to let me buy another one. That's why he'll freak out. So anyways, um, so then he says, um, I have a newbie out in the van. Is it okay if he comes in and takes notes while, while he's giving the demonstration? I'm like, um, I guess. So then he, before I even really answer, he's already walking out the door to get the other guy. He goes out to this passenger van. He gets the other guy and starts sending the other guy in and he takes off. So the one guy who did make me feel kind of comfortable, he takes off. And now 
I've got this other strange guy walking up to my door and I'm sorry, but this kid, he looked like he was on a quarter gram of meth. He was about this big around, blacked, blacked out eyes. Just He was dressed very nice, but he was very impersonal. He sat in my house for almost 20 minutes and never said a word. Never hi, bye, nice to meet you, nothing, just nothing. Which made me also very uncomfortable. The guy who was given the demonstration was very nervous and fidgety and um, I don't know if maybe I was making him feel nervous because at this point I have to tell you my blood is running cold I am feeling very not comfortable so I tell Chloe I'm like hey Chloe can you go out and check the mail for me because my goal was to get my daughter out of the house I did not want my daughter this is what is going on in my mind this is how insecure and un comfortable I'm feeling at this moment that I'm now plotting on how to get my daughter away from these men just in case um, so I said Chloe can you go check the mail for me please so she takes the keys and she goes out out of the house to go check the mail and um, as she starts walking back up the walkway I walk out to her and I says call your dad and find out where he is I need him home because these guys I'm getting a weird vibe from these guys so she's like okay and I said and stay outside please so she stays outside and she's calling her dad she gets her dad on the phone he starts yelling at me what's going on get him out of there we're not buying no Kirby get him out of there he starts yelling at me so I tell him I'm like um yeah my husband says it's not gonna happen and he just keeps like he's like well would you buy the vacuum if it was in the house? And I was like, it's not a question of would I use it. it I know I'd use it. I used the old one. I said, it's a question of having $3,000 to buy a vacuum cleaner. That's not going to happen. I don't even have carpet in my house. And um, <laughs> he just kept pushing it. And mind you, this entire time, I've got my door wide open and I'm standing by my front door because I'm so uncomfortable um, that I won't close my door. And so Chloe's friend comes to pick her up. And now I tell Chloe, I was like, make sure Stephanie does not leave until your dad gets here. So she sat outside out at the curb and that made me feel a little bit comfortable. And so, but basically I had to tell these guys, I said, look, here's the deal. My husband's on the phone. He says, no deal. You need to pack up and you need to go. Oh, okay well and then he gets on the phone and he acts like he's talking to somebody and he's like well she used to have a Kirby and she says she really liked to have another Kirby I'm like I never said that <laughs> um, so but anyways he's at, he's taught he's talking to somebody on the phone but to me it seems like he's acting like he's talking to somebody on the phone so then he writes some stuff down on a paper and he comes over and he gives me this paper and he's like this is the deal we can give you so I'm looking at this paper and I I kid you not it looks like a kindergartner wrote this I mean it the the, the, the I was just like what is going on who are these guys in my house I was just like freaking out so I was just like no it's not gonna happen you gotta go you have to put everything away so then their whole vibe changed and they were not as friendly as they were trying to be before and they were just they got really quiet and they started taking the vacuum apart so now I'm like freaking out um, so they put the vacuum back together at this point the tall guy walks back into the house and he's like so they told me the price they were going to give you the vacuum cleaner. You still don't want the vacuum cleaner? I'm like, it's $1,200. I, I, I understand that that's half the price, but it's still $1,200. I'm, I'm like, look at me. Do I look like I have $1,200? I was like, it's not going to happen. I need you guys to take this stuff and I need you to go. And so he was like, oh, all right, well, all right, thank you for your time. And then he, t and he leaves again, and he leaves the two guys in my house. And I'm like, I looked at the guys, and I'm like, I think your ride just left. And they're like, yeah, he does that. And I was just like, what in the hell kind of operation is this? I'm just like freaking out. And this guy is driving all over my neighborhood, and apparently he's got people in all kinds of houses in my neighborhood. And I'm like, 
what is going on? So after, so finally they pack everything up and they go outside and the guy is not there. So they go outside to the curb in front of my garage and they're just sitting there on their boxes waiting for this guy to come back and get them. And I was just like, what? So at this point I'm out at my friend's van telling her and she's like, they're driving an out of state car. The, the, the passenger van has a California license plate on it. And now I'm just like, who the hell are these people? So I'm feeling extremely paranoid and, and uncomfortable. So I was like, will you please come in the house and stay with me until my husband gets home? I'm not comfortable. And she was like, of course. So she came inside with me and she stayed. And um, she, she had written down all their information. The reason I'm making this video is not to gloat about how stupid stupid and unprepared for this situation I was because that's apparent. I said, the, the point of me making this video is to warn you if you live in Las Vegas about this situation, because I can't even tell you guys when I went to bed last night, I didn't know if these guys were going to come back and try and break into my house. I didn't know if they were going to try and rob me today while I'm out at work. I don't know what their MO was and what their purpose was. I don't know if they were legitimate Kirby salesmen. So fortunately they left this in my house. Look at that. This is what they left in my house. Okay. So it had the address and the phone number on the, on the thing. So I called the phone number today to find out if they were legitimate, if they were part of the company and whatnot. And the guy did reassure me that they do have a passenger van that has California plates on. It is not out of the ordinary for the for people from out of out of state to come to other places to sell. Um, uh, and and he basically knew who I was talking about and um, I told him I, I sat on the phone with him for a half an hour and I told him I was like look you know what we don't live in the same type of world that we used to live in you can't come as a woman to somebody's door and say I'll be back in 15 minutes and then send men that I didn't agree to have men in my home they just showed up and now I'm in a situation where now I have to deal with these men in my home and I can either deal with it by listening to their spiel and putting myself and my kids at risk of having these men in my home or I can tell them to leave. So that was the situation I was put in. I'm hoping that, you know, if this woman shows up at your door, you guys, d d unless you got $3,000 to waste on a Kirby, get these guys out of your home. Don't let them in just don't even let him in. And I swear this situation had me so freaked out. I was like, I don't care who's standing at that door. I don't care if it's a little kid. This door doesn't get opened for anybody unless it's somebody we're expecting or somebody we know. It doesn't get opened. Period. I, I don't care because it's just too scary. It's too scary to think about how bad that could have gone wrong. That could have gone so horribly wrong. So, um, I hope that this, uh, video helps you, uh, to identify these people. If they come to your home, don't open your door. Don't let them in. Don't give them the time of day because if you show them a, even a scrapling that they can, they, they can persuade you, they will try and run your credit to get you approved for financing. They will get your banking information and they will leave with it. I mean, it's just, it's just no good because these guys do not look like respectable, honest people is is the bottom line so you're giving them your banking information you're letting them into your home and and they don't look like respectable and honest people i'm sorry i have very very good discernment about people and even if these guys were legitimately kirby salesmen they were shady characters Okay, so I don't know what their hiring process is over there. I don't know what kind of background checks they do on these people that they send into unsuspecting women's homes. Isn't there a Bible verse about that? Something about uh, they, they come into uh, widows' homes and bewitch them or something. I don't know. I, I don't know the exact wording, but I know there's a Bible verse about how people come in and take advantage of, of women who are alone. So anyways, um, 
I just wanted to to warn you guys do my do my duty to warn you that these guys are going around doing this stuff I don't know what their I don't know what the ultimate thing is to to sell a vacuum cleaner or to get your information I don't know it just seemed the whole operation seemed really shady and that's what I told the guy who runs the office today I said you know you, you got to be more sensitive to the fact that you know some women are alone and they don't have men in their home or they're a home with their children and it, you know it, we don't live in the same world where door-to-door -door salesmen can exist I'm sorry that's what the internet shopping is for so that you don't have all these strangers in your home anyway um, I hope that this helps and I hope I hope that you don't end up in this situation the situation same as I did um, we have to constantly be skeptics in this in this world we live in we have to be on our toes and yesterday I let my guard down and I I paid the price for it you know it was not a comfortable comfortable deal at all so I'll talk to you guys later hope this helps bye